Here's Frank, Scott, Chris, and Adam. The second half of the MLB season is just about to begin, and we'll be doing it with one of the Red Sox top prospects, Jaron Duran. Welcome in to an emergency edition of Fantasy Baseball today on Wednesday night, July 14th. Frank Stanfield joined by Scott White, and we were waiting and waiting and waiting <laughs> for Red Sox outfielder Jaron Duran to get the call. Multiple outlets confirming the 24 year old was batting at 270 at AAA with 15 home runs and 12 steals, will be called up for Thursday's game against the New York Yankees. Lots of power, lots of speed. Scott, one might say that he is hungry like the wolf. Currently 47% rostered on CBS. Is he a must-add in fantasy baseball? I, that might be going a little far. You know, obviously it's been an issue really dating back to last season with these prospect call-ups most of them have been duds there seems to be there seems to be a snag that's developed in the development process where these players aren't transitioning to the majors as easily as they used to and maybe it's just been a stretch where uh you know a, a stretch of bad luck basically because it's it's not like every single prospect that did before this wasn't an immediate success in the majors. Sometimes it, it takes time to break in. It just seems like it's taking time for everyone to break in at this point. And it, you know, Jaron Duran, Duran, he's not, uh, he's not, um, you know, he's not Wander Franco. He's not Jared Kelnick. He's he's a step down from then. And yet, even those two have been less than impact players so far in the majors. Kelnick got sent back down. It sounds like he's on the way back up and. Maybe he could still be that. Maybe Wander Franco turns things around before the end of the season. But, you know, Jaron Duran isn't them. Uh, so I'm probably going to put him in my top 50 outfielders to start out. That seems like a good, safe, conservative place to slot him and, uh, and, and, you know, see how things develop. Obviously, he's turned himself into a really good prospect in a very short amount of time. You know, he's, he'd been... He'd been a name you'd hear about in prospect circles for the past couple years, but he was kind of a kind of an odd fit in today's game, kind of a slap hitting speedster, and uh, really turned things around last year. Worked with hitting guru Doug Lada, who is most known for for uh, making Justin Turner into the perennial all star he is. You know, he used to be a role player for the Mets, and Doug Lada got a hold of him and turned him into a stud, and so uh, seemed to unlock. Jaron Duran's raw power, make him a more well-rounded player. But it wasn't really until the spring that prospect evaluators caught on to that. You know, he hit, I think Duran hit eight home runs at the alternate training site last year. So there, it definitely opened some eyes with that. But it, it wasn't a regular on top 100 list or anything heading, in, heading into the season. Had a big spring. It's obviously had a good season at AAA. 15 home runs. Uh, that puts him among the minor, minor league leaders in that category, where, again, he was really just a slap hitter prior to prior to his time at the alternate training site last year. Um, so, yeah, there's some contact skills there. You know, it seems like he's maybe traded off some of those for more power. He can run as much as the Red Sox will let him anyway. And so it, there's a chance this goes very well on Duran. We think of him as a must-start player by the end of the season. I, I would say the odds are against it, the way these minor league promotions have gone recently. But there, you just want there to be a chance. I, I think if you approach him like it, it, from the perspective that it's a true lottery ticket, probably not going to pay off in a big way, but you're not going to get the reward if you're not possessing it, then I think you'll be fine. Definitely a unique player and unique situation, as you alluded to, with originally being known as a guy with a hit tool and a speed tool. A couple of years ago, he stole 46 bases back in 2019 in the minor leagues. So now puts on some muscle in that 2020 season. And you mentioned what he did in spring training, too, where he hit 340, small sample size, only 47 at bats, but 340 batting average, three homers, six doubles two steals, and that really has carried over into AAA so far this season in the minors. So you said not necessarily a must-add. We did get this question from our Facebook group on uh, our Fantasy Baseball Today Facebook group. This one's from Kevin Quack, and he, add, he asked, 
is he must add in a 10 team points league? So probably not going that far, Scott. And he probably profiles better Duran does as someone in a roto or categories league, right? Yeah, I would, I would say so. It doesn't seem like the on base skills are anything to write home about. And, you know, we're hoping for that speed element as he's become more of a power hitter this year. He hasn't run quite as frequently, but 12 steals and 46 games is obviously still a good pace. You never know how that's going to translate to the majors, particularly if, if it's not, if it's not the skill that got the player there, you, you don't know if this team's going to ask him to do much of that at all. You're, it's really hard to say, uh, but you're hopeful that he will be a contributor in stolen bases, and if that's the case, then probably um, probably more valuable in Roto League. Certainly just the fact that you're starting five outfielders in those formats typically mm-hmm. would make Duran more valuable there. You know, if, if you just lost Ronald Acuna and you, you, you need to try and make up that across-the-board production somehow, I'm not saying Duran's going to be that, but... If if the lottery ticket pays off, you know he might get seventy five percent of the way there. So it's it's not a bad gamble. It's it's certainly better than you know giving up half your team for another for another first round bat. Yeah, it's a great point that you bring up with Ronald Acuna going down. One of the top five hitters in all of fantasy baseball, obviously, uh, tearing his ACL last week. So this is a nice little consolation prize if you were holding on to. Uh, Jaron Duran, or if he is a free agent in your league, you can go out and add him. Now, the other wrinkle here is something you've also alluded to, Scott, is that Ryan Divish, a beat writer for the Seattle Times, all but confirmed to us on Twitter that Jared Kelnick will be recalled to start the second half of the season for the Seattle Mariners. So Jared Kelnick is 70% rostered and was regarded as much higher of a prospect than Jared Kelnick. So if you're just comparing those two, which one would you rather have? Than Duran. Kelnick was higher, much higher than Duran. Yes. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, uh, Kelnick. Kelnick. I, I think I think Kelnick's first stint in the majors could have played out very differently. Um, he, he came up, his, his second game in the majors was awesome, and he wasn't striking out for his first two weeks on the job. And then it just seemed like he was having bad luck on balls in play and then started pressing and then the strikeouts piled up and he got sent back down and there were some struggles then at first too, as he tried to reorient himself after, uh, after kind of coming unraveled at the major league level, but he's completely turned it around down to triple a back to looking like a stud. And I think has a better chance of Duran than Duran of making an immediate impact and, and potentially, potentially a huge impact. Uh, potentially, you know, if I was choosing between the two, I, I would go with Kelnick both for both for upside and downside reasons. All right, so Kelnick over Duran. Let's kind of lump them all together, the prospects that have been called up within the past month or so. Kelnick, Duran, Wander Franco, and Vidal Brujan, who are both with the Tampa Bay Rays. So, Scott, rank those four for me in both Roto and in head-to-head points. Kelnick, Duran, Franco, Brujan. It'd probably be the same, regardless of format for me. Yeah. I'd go Kelnick one, I think, over over Wander Franco, believe it or not. And uh, you know that's really close between those two. Definitely one and two, one and one a there. Uh, and then the third one, I'll I'll say Duran over over Vidal Bruhan because Bruhan was really struggling to end a stint in the minors, and I'm just I'm not sure he's going to play quite every day. I. Duran, I, I assume the Red Sox just slot him in as their everyday center fielder. They'd been making do with uh, some some bad choices there. Um, Enrique Hernandez had played a lot of center field. He could just move to second base, where they had been, uh, you know, been starting a bunch of retreads. Basically, <laughs> nobody they, they they had a clear opening there that I, it I'm kind of surprised it's taken this long for them to fill with Duran. To be honest. At, as well as he performed this spring, as well as good as he looked in the minors. You know, obviously he left for a while to play for uh, Team USA, the qualifying team for the Olympics, and so that kind of delayed him. But you know, he's been back for several weeks now, so I'm surprised it's it's taken this long for this to happen. But I assume Duran is ready to step in as the everyday center fielder, and uh, hopefully he doesn't look back. Hopefully he performs well enough that he keeps that job. Rest of season, it's just become 
It's become less of a certainty now than it had been for the past five, six years with with prospect call-ups of this caliber. Last question. I didn't even ask you about Fab, Scott. And I don't know how much Fab people have left at this point going into the second half of the fantasy baseball season. But uh, how much would you spend on him, let's say, in a 12-team league? And then if you play in like a 15-team roto league, it's I would have to imagine it's going to cost at least 15 to 20% in a league that deep. Yeah, and you should pay that much in a in a fifteen team league, especially a five outfielder league, and it's just been so rare in, in in such a deep league to find an impact bat on waivers. Which again, Duran may not be right away, but at least there's a chance. So I would say I would say as high as twenty five percent in those fifteen team leagues, um, and if it's a if it's a league where you know zero dollar bids count. And maybe even well more than that. Um, but in a 12-team league, I would, I, I don't know, 10% seems pretty aggressive, I would say. Yeah. 5 to 10%. All right. So there you go. Exciting times. We now have Jaron Duran, hopefully Jared Kelnick to start the second half, Wander Franco and Vidal Brujan in the majors all together at the same time. And it definitely helps that Brujan's, uh, Duran's first series is coming at Yankee Stadium as a left-handed batter. So I'll be at the game on Friday. It's going to be a lot of fun to see. I'm calling it now, Scott. At least <laughs> one home run this weekend for Jaron Duran with that short porch in right field. That'll do it here. For Scott, I am Frank. Thank you all for listening and watching Fantasy Baseball today. We'll be back again later on. Bye-bye.